Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I am currently here with the undefeated prospect, Alex Bad News Hills. How are you Al, you and the family well? All good, thank you, yeah, brilliant John. Alright, I'll start off with a question a lot of people have been asking. You've been out, for the, out of the ring for over a year now, could you tell us the reason for your absence? Um, picked up an ACI injury, um, the muscle behind my right eye kind of, um, kind of collapsed. Which, uh, which forced me to have a surgery called squint surgery. Yeah. Quite a nasty surgery in fairness, and it's left me out a while. But um, I've been in the gym taking over. I'm still feeling quite fit. And um, just looking forward to a return now. Brilliant, yeah. So you say you're back in the gym now and working on your return. When can we expect to see you compete then again? Yeah, um, I, to be honest, I wouldn't say back in the gym. I've been in the gym all the time doing sport the box, and I love it. And I don't think I could go without it, to be honest. I'm in the gym nearly every day. But um, I've had a few words with Gary. We spoke a few things over. And um, I look to be back late to early, late October to early November. So, you know, it's just a matter of time. I was nearly here, so can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Now currently 10 and 0, having turned professional in 2014. I remember you were debut and the run up to which Gary told me in the press conference that you were one to watch in the future. Your career was tickling along nicely, but due to this later setback, have you had to push back targets or do you still see yourself challenging for the titles this year or early next year? Uh, well, obviously, prior to this injury, the, um, the aim was probably to have a, a title shot late last year, but um, obviously things are going to plan, but like I said, I've had a year out of the ring, just over a year now. I can't really see it happening so much at the end of this year. But um, I'd like to get two, maybe three into the end of the end of this year, get rid of some ring rust. And then but definitely early next year, the mid next year. Storm away through the British ranks and pick that title up and then on from there. Obviously you're still young and ill, so there's no rush at the moment anyway. I'm curious as many others probably are. Where did the nickname Bad News come from, Al? Bad is a kid. <laughs> I wasn't even bad news, eh? It's always been there, like. yeah. <laughs> Tell us, mate, how did you make your start in the sport of boxing? You know, it's, it's a funny one, really, because, like I said, none of my family ever boxed. None of them ever boxed. And, like I said, I don't really know where they come from. A few of my mates from school um, just took it up as a bit of an hobby. And um, I found myself to be pretty good at that, in fairness. And I was at the age of eight that first entered the gym, and like I said, I've never left since, and I love the sport, so... Yeah, it's good. Your amateur career was one filled with achievements, but could you tell everybody of your time in the unpaid ranks, and what stands out as your proudest moment? Definitely my first ever Welsh title. I can remember, um, you know, as a kid, it's always awkward, oh, imagine being Welsh champion and these kind of things, and um, I can remember the first time I got to the final, and... It was a bit of a barnstorm of a fight, and I was, I was only 11, 12, and um, it was a close fight, and after the fight, we were in the, in the middle of the ring, and the ref was holding our hands while the judges was reading the scores out. I come, the ref squeezed my hand, and I come, sit there again, is he squeezing my hand to tell me something? <laughs> and then when, obviously, I had the win, and um, I jumped up the air with joy, and I broke my heart in the middle of the yeah. ring, and I started crying and everything, and I wouldn't even say maybe... You know, just the unpaid ranks, I'd say, I'd say still now, that's probably my highlight of my boxing career, still. Moment to remember for the oh, rest of your definitely, life. Definitely, yeah. Your latest win was in April 2017 against Daniel Ubranski in a fight where you stopped him in the opening round. Can you take us through that fight and the punch that ended the proceedings? Yeah, um, I, f I felt really good for that fight. Um, I said my first, my first four fights was down at middleweight, stopped three of them. Um, moved up the super middleweight. Don't don't think it quite well. It went as well as planned. Maybe I should have always stayed at middleweight. You know I mean? But um, so me me and Gary decided to go back down, trade hard, done the weight easy, and I felt great. And um, you know, Daniel Bransky, he was a tough guy. I know in the lead up, I think he'd only been stopped twice then, and one of them was Gendy Golovkin, and he stopped him in four rounds. So to go in there and stop him in the first was. Um, was a good thing, and I can remember he threw a lazy jab and hit him with the right hand, and he done a bit of a funny dance, and then I jumped on him and hurt him, and he got back up. I hit him down again. I kind of knew it was over then. Every time I was hurting him, I think I was um, I was wobbling a bit, so it was only going to be a matter of time, really. 
It was bad news for him, man. So it was bad news, man. <laughs> you have a great relationship with Gary. What in the time spent in a locket gym has been most valuable to you as a professional? And what does Gary bring to the table that feels suits you personally? Um, one thing I think with Gary is, you know, I met Gary, I first went to Gary at the age of 16, so realistically, Gary watched me grow. So he, he kind of, he knows me inside out anyway, and you know, not just in boxing wise, as a person, I would, like I said, he, he seen me grow from a boy to a man. So I think on top of the boxing wise and all that kind of stuff, I think that's more important than anything. He knows me as a person. And I think with the kind of sport we're in, you know, the brutality of things, someone who's that close to you, that, that's just a massive help in itself anyway. Yep. Welsh boxing in general is on the rise with the hopefuls and champions are plenty in the likes of Gavin Gwynn, Ashley Brace, Andrew Selby, Lee Selby and of course the big man himself, Alex Hughes. What is your feeling on the landscape of Welsh boxing? Do you feel it's in a good place now? Yeah, you know, Wales, Wales got some, they got some cracking fighters like you know, the people you name there and more but like, still, I still feel like we're all still overlooked. You know, none of us really get the credit we we do deserve because it's like just the few you name by there, they they're brilliant fighters. You mean and they yeah. all they all deserve more exposure and coverage than we get. And you know it's it's a good time for Welsh boxing, but at the same time, you know it, it can be quite sad to see these fighters not getting the the coverage and the support and everything they deserve and need. That's very true. Very true. You're a big advocate for Marty Boxing Club, who seem to be still churning out champions out of tomorrow. Is it important to you to give back to your roots? And which fighter should we be keeping an eye out for in the future? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's important to give back your roots, but at the same time, it's like these lot in the other gym where we are now, Marty ABC, they give back just as much to me as I give to them. Like last night, I was up here training, and there's a youngster up here, Ethan Jones. He must have given me on ten rounds on the pads. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they helped me out as much yeah. as I help him out. They don't, no, they don't look at me like I'm famous. I'm just one of the boys to them. But um, as people who are going to come through champions, you know, there's too many of them to name. You know, with so many quality boys here, and they're all coming through helping, helping each other. And it's a type of gym, you know, we're all friends, and you know, it's home for home for me. I live it up here. Liam Williams is a stable mate of yours but recently made a decision to move his training camp to Sheffield. Did that come as a shock to yourself? And what was your feeling when you heard that he was leaving Gary? Um, obviously, as I've had my operation and things, um, I don't get the chance to go down Gary so much anymore, so I don't really keep up to date with the news. So obviously when I first heard, it, um, it was a bit of a shock. And um, But like I said, Liam, he, he's one hell of a fighter. And, He's a good friend of mine in and out of boxing, so I just wish him nothing but the best. And I'm sure if this was right for him, he'll get him back on the world scene where he belongs. So good luck to him. Yep, we also wish him all the best. I got some quick fire questions for you before we finish. Are you ready? Smash them away, John. <laughs> what is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Everything I eat is weird. You know? <laughs> I don't eat anything pretty good. Everything I eat is weird. <laughs> I can't remember the last number thing I had, so I don't know, I don't know, was too many things to say. Too many things? Yeah. If you could meet anybody for the first time right now, for one hour only, past or present, who would it be? I think I'd go with um, it's a Tough question, huh? Chuck Berry, I think. Chuck Berry? Yeah, big Chuck, I'd have to. <laughs> I love the Chuck, yeah. School days? Yeah, that's it. Tea or coffee? Oh, coffee. And you sure? Said, yeah. <laughs> what is an interesting fact about yourself? I say, an interesting fact about myself is, I'd say, looking at my interviews back, I'm a lot better looking in real life. <laughs> than I'm That's an interesting fact. Yeah, definitely. Fair point, fair people point. People don't notice how I look like that. <laughs> I'm better in real life. Uh, if you could rename the street you live in, what would you call it? Bad News Terrace. Bad News Terrace. Simple Not many people want to be living there. <laughs> if you were given a book with a story of your life, would you read the end? 
No, I think I could. Them and Wally, as it is. Yeah. No way my time would come in. I'd, I'd uh, push me over the edge, I would, I think. What CD is currently in your car? Um, no, that's what I call soul music. Good choice. Classics, all that kind of stuff. Brilliant. Good choice. Be careful how you would answer you. Dinner date out with the missus, or every night out with the boys? Oh, on camera, eh? Like. Yeah. It's all on evidence. Go with the missus, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some brilliant answers there. Thank you very much for your time today, Alex. We're all very much looking forward to the return of the bad news. Brilliant. Thank Spot you very on. much.